that was so wonderful and I'm sure after a while they would have figured out I am a raging Cajun from Southwest Louisiana. But I happen to be a lady named Jan and I'm what's titled a body language expert. You see, I teach people how to tell what other people are thinking. I study how a person moves his hands and his arms and his eyes and his shoulders and then I interpret that and tell you what's going on inside his head. I'm involved in jury selection so there's a pretty serious side to what I do. And I specialize in how to tell when someone's telling the truth versus how to tell when someone's telling a lie. So maybe while I'm with you today, I can teach you how to tell when people are lying to you. Better yet, I could teach you how to lie to other people and they won't know. <laughs> so I can probably teach you just enough to get you in some kind of trouble. I'm going to start off with something quite interesting and fun for you. You see, I watch people in the courtroom every day and I watch them raise their right hand. And then I listen as they say, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I have gotten to where I watch the way they lift their hand, and I can tell you if they'll tell us the truth or not. So just as an experiment, could you raise your right hand? Let's pretend. Let's just pretend we're sitting there and we're getting ready to say, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Key thing is this, you must freeze your hand right now. Just freeze it. Because I will tell you some things that I see. Some of you will not like sitting by some of the people you're sitting by. <laughs> I will teach you what we look for in the courtroom, but I need you to freeze your hand so that you can know what you were thinking initially when you were asked to lift the hand. I look for five things. Some of you are like this. I mean, see how wide apart my fingers are and look how rigid my hand is? I'll tell you what that says about a person in the courtroom. Some of you have your hand up and your fingers are tight together. I'm going to explain that one to you. I notice some people have their hands bent. I'll tell you what that says about you. <laughs> Couple of people have two fingers together, two fingers apart. <laughs> I am worried about you. <laughs> and some people even lean their hands back. So keep your hand up so I can tell you what each one meant. This is the very first one. Look how rigid my hand is and look how wide apart the fingers are. When someone is in the courtroom and their hand is this way, this usually says that they are terrified and they will tell us the whole truth. <laughs> so if ever you have to go, go just like this. Second one, though, is equally as good. If the hand is up and the fingers are tight together, this says that they will tell us the truth, but we will have to pull it out of them. <laughs> this is called an analytical honesty. Third is probably the most frightening. Anytime the hand is bent, it usually says that they will try to lie to us. So you may want to check on your neighbors right now. <laughs> fourth one is also interesting. For the fourth one, I had two fingers together and two fingers apart. Think about what I initially said. Whenever fingers are apart, it's a readily type of honesty. And when fingers are tight together, it's an analytical honesty. Therefore, this person would give us both types of responses. And in the last one, I just bent my hand backwards this way. When people tend to bend the hand backwards, it usually says that they will try to bend over backwards to get you to believe them, but will typically be telling you a lie. Now put your hand down. You know what's going to be great about everything you learned from me this morning? Everything you can learn, you learn, you can use immediately in your own personal lives. So this evening when you return home and you see your spouse, you may want to say, now, what have you been doing since I've been gone all day? And as your spouse begins to tell you, say, can you finish telling me that story and just put your right hand up? <laughs> <laughs> and look to see if it's this way or this way. That's what my job is, is that every time a person moves a hand or an arm or an eye or a shoulder, all of this motion is indicative of what that person is thinking. And in reality, a body does not know how to tell a lie. It is a mouth that tells a lie. You find out while we're together that you move your hands a certain way when you're saying something that you know is not honest, and that you move your hands another way when you're saying something that you know is absolutely, absolutely true. I'll start off at first, and I'll give you the percentages so that it sits well with you. This is what the research has indicated to us. 55% of a person's communication is nonverbal, 55%. The moment we see someone, we form an opinion of them and we say, do I like that person? Do I trust that person? Do I even want to do some kind of business with them? 55% of our communication is nonverbal communication. 38% of a person's communication simply comes from their voice inflection. 
just when our voices go up or down, that keeps people interested in what we're saying. And then the research says that only 7% of a person's actual communication comes from the words that they say. And I know you've heard the old saying, actions speak louder than words. We say an awful lot of things with the way that we move our hands, our heads, our shoulders. My job and objective today is to teach you as much as I can about this whole thing called nonverbal communication. I'm going to start off because I've been watching you since this morning, watched you come through, watched you sit in here with the previous speakers. I just want to show you some gestures I have noticed some of you have done. And as I teach you and tell you this gesture, I just want you to tell me if you think it is true or if you think it is false. I will give you a test of five gestures. Here comes number one. Let's say you're talking with someone, predominantly a man. Let's say you're speaking with a guy. And as the guy listens to you, the whole time that he listens, he just starts doing this. He will slowly, slowly rub the bottom of his chin this way. For question number one, I want to ask it in this way and say, when someone does this, this is a sign that says that they are seriously contemplating what is being said. Would you think that that would be true? Do you think that that would be false? What do you think? We'll not give you the answers just yet. You have five questions on this exam. Here comes number two. And I know you've seen this gesture. Number two goes this way. Men who constantly jingle the change in their pockets. <laughs> when a man will constantly jingle the change in his pockets, it is, it is a sign that says that he is quite concerned about his financial condition. Would you think that that one would be true? Do you think that that one would be false? What do you think? I will keep that one in for you. Number three is probably the most frightening one that I could ask of you, but I need your opinion, and it goes this way. People who tend to use their left hand a lot tend to lie a lot. Would you think that that would be true? Do you think that that one would be false? What do you think? False. Probably everyone who said false is left-handed. <laughs> Where are my left-handed friends? Let me see those nice left-handed friends. They look very honest to me, so let me repeat number three. Did not ask and say people who are left-handed. Simply ask and said... People who tend to use the left hand a lot tend to lie a lot. I'm going to keep that one in. I will try this one with you for number four and get your opinion goes this way. Suppose you are watching a man and a woman in a casual conversation. And as this man and woman are speaking, let's say the man begins to pull up his socks. For number four, let me ask you this. When a man begins to pull up his socks during a casual conversation with a lady, it usually says that he would like to ask the lady out on a date. Would you think that that would be true? Do you think that that one would be false? What do you think? I think you need some training in body language. I can see it now. I can see it now. Let me try this last one for number five. And I know this is a gesture you've done often and also seen done. Let's say you're talking with someone. And I imagine when you're talking, watch. Your hands go away from your body. Sometimes they come towards your body. Probably some of you have even said, if I could not use my hands, I could not even speak. I'll clarify that before I even ask question number five. It is perfectly all right to use your hands when you're talking because watch what happens psychologically. When you move your right hand, or for that matter, anything you move on the right side of your body, all of this motion is controlled from the left side of your head, your left brain. Your left brain, it's analytical, it is statistical, it is factual. Our timetables are on this side of our head. If you are multiplying something in your head and have trouble getting the numbers multiplied, you would end up moving your right hand. It would help clarify what you are thinking, and then you could speak those words. When you move your left hand or anything you move on this side of the body, all of that, of course, is controlled from the right side of your head. Your right brain, it's creative, it is comical, it daydreams. If you ever drove somewhere and you don't know how you got there, you drove right brain. 